A warm welcome to you all this week. This week's meditation is on the Feast of Mary, the Mother of Christ. In Psalm 45 verses 10 to 17, we can learn so much from Mary. We often focus on the Apostles and I thought as it was the Feast of Mary it would be good to celebrate and focus on Mary and what example that she is to us all as a mother and as somebody who had a faithful relationship with the Lord and followed and listened to God in all circumstances. Let me read the Bible passage for you today, which is from Psalms 45. Listen, daughter, and pay careful attention. Forget your people and your father's house. Let the king be enthralled by your beauty. Honour him, for he is your Lord. The city of Tyre will come with a gift. A people of wealth will seek your favour. All glorious is the princess within her chamber. Her gown is interwoven with gold. In embroidered garments she is led to the king. Her virgin companion follows her. Those brought to to be with her, led in with joy and gladness, they enter the palace of the king. Your sons will take the place of your fathers and you will make them princes throughout the land. I will perpetuate your memory through all generations Therefore, the nations will praise you forever and ever. Listen, daughter, and pay careful attention. Mary had a visit from the angel Gabriel. And he says to her, you are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary's response was she was troubled. And she thought, what kind of greeting will this be? And it got me to thinking, what kind of greeting will this be? She must have had a relationship with God before this. This wasn't the first time that maybe God had spoken to her because she wondered what type of greeting it was. And God had found favour with her and the angel told her that she will conceive and give birth to a son and he will be the great and most high and he will also be on the throne of David and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever and ever and his kingdom will never end. And Mary, being a young girl, she just simply said, well, how's this going to happen? I'm still a virgin. And although Mary was perplexed, she did have enough insight to know that she would trust God. And the angel answers her with, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So she knew, even though she was afraid, even though she knew that she was going to obey God and she didn't know what was going to happen or how it was going to happen, that the Holy Spirit and the power of the Most High would overshadow her, would be around her, would protect her. Again, Mary's response is, I am the Lord's servant. May your word be fulfilled to me. And then the angel left her. Mary risked a lot at this point in her culture to be a single mother and to be pregnant was unacceptable. There was a risk of being stoned to death or cast out of her community. But she trusted in a relationship with God. She trusted in the words of the angel that she would be protected And that God favoured her and had chosen her to do this work. So that there was a calling on her life to do this. Mary teaches us how to trust God. How to obey God. How to surrender our will in all circumstances. Even in difficult and uncertain times. And when we don't understand what's going to happen. She teaches us to trust and obey God and to follow his instruction and that his Holy Spirit will give us strength to get through all situations. She teaches us how to love and obey her son Jesus. God was sending his son to be born of a woman, to be born of Mary. Just an ordinary young girl in a village God had chosen her, God had called her because she had relationship with him. 
Mary understood the power of God. Mary teaches us whatever God says is just is just to do it. Because Mary stood for the truth and she believed her son was the son of God and her faith trusted God to get her through it no matter what. Even at the wedding at Cana, when the wine runs out, Mary's response to the situation is to ask her son for more wine and we hear of his first miracle. When the wine has gone, Jesus' mother says to him, they have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, my hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Mary doesn't doubt her son's ability to perform a miracle. We don't know whose wedding it was and why it was important to Mary that the wine didn't run out. But what we note is that Jesus' response, he wasn't best pleased, but he responded to his mother's request. And this talks to me about relationship. It's about a relationship with a son and a mother. She's made a request. She's commanded the servants to follow his instructions. She knows that her son is going to do what she's asked of him. She knows that it's time for him to be called. And she trusts in the situation that has come about to her at this wedding that there is not enough wine. And what I notice after the, these verses is that Jesus, the disciples and his mother went down to Capernaum after the wedding and they stayed together. And this is about family, it's about community, it's about being together. It's about sometimes we don't have to be on our own. God provides us with people along the way, along the journey. And Mary teaches us that we need to be in fellowship with one another. We need to be around our family and if we haven't got good families, it's about building and making a church family, a family that can support us in all situations and all circumstances. Mary also teaches us about devotion. She watched her son die. She would have seen his tortured body, witnessed his agonising death. Her son was probably unrecognisable through some of the wounds and the beatings he'd received. But on his death, Jesus saw his mother in John 19, 25. And he's seen the a disciple he loved. Woman, here is your son. Disciple, here is your mother. God teaches us that we are the sons and the mothers and the daughters and the fathers to all Christians, to all disciples. That we just don't keep our love to ourselves. It's about sharing it with each and every one. Jesus would have laid him out after he died and she anointed his body with oils. I can't imagine a tougher job to lay and anoint your own son's body. She must have endured much agony as she witnessed that crucifixion and his death. But then what joy when she heard that he rose. I don't doubt for one minute that she didn't believe that God, her son, had risen that God had kept her promise that her son would be the new Messiah because she had been called by God and she believed. Mary believed she was an ordinary person, an ordinary young girl. She had a relationship with God. She trusted, obeyed and listened to God. God found favour in her her journey wasn't a glamorous one, it was one of suffering and endurance and yet she saw with her own eyes the miracles her son performed. Through much suffering she had much joy. So as we celebrate the feast of Mary, let's celebrate in the psalm we are called into a loving relationship to God. Mary teaches us to, us to love, trust and obey God in all circumstances, that he has a plan and he will be alongside us whenever we endure much suffering. Indeed, God still is a God of miracles and we can expect the unexpected. Like Mary, God chose us. He chose a young girl, a teenager, a teenager to 
have give birth to a saviour. And she had this relationship with God. And God wants this relationship with us. And through Christ, his son, we are all able to reconcile ourselves to God. I will perpetuate your memory through all the generations. Therefore, the nations will praise you forever and ever. And God found a way to bring us back into relationship with him through his son, Jesus Christ. And through Mary, we have a living example of how to be faithful followers of Christ. Thank you for your time and have a blessed day. God bless.